Hello everybody, welcome to Therapist Take. We're gonna talk about what it means to be a good communicator, so don't go anywhere. Welcome everyone to Therapist Take. We're gonna to talk today about what it means to be a good communicator. We decided we just kinda of go back to the basics, yeah. to the fundamentals. Yeah. Um, but we ask everybody, if you're watching this live on um, or, a re, or the rebroadcast on YouTube, just make sure you subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you can be notified when more videos are posted. But I think without further ado, we can jump right in. We can jump right in. To yeah. a wide but very important topic. Right. It is, right. It is an extremely, extremely broad topic. Right. So right. we could talk forever about this. Right. We um, could go as nuanced as... Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, there's a lot of complexities to mm -hmm. this. So as I was sitting here thinking about how are we going to organize this, um, it was quite difficult because we're definitely not going to even touch the hem of the garment right now. No, so, no. so, uh, just real quickly. So we'll, we'll just go over the topics for you guys. Uh, we're going to talk about this idea of insecurities being injured feelings. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to cover, uh, uh, the idea of being curious as a, uh, being curious about the truth basically so mm -hmm. we're gonna um, dive into that a little bit that's something I like to talk to my clients a lot sure. about sure. and then uh, we talk a lot about creating safety in relationships right and we're gonna kind of take a present a different take on that on uh, creating safety within self so right. those are the three areas and then we'll we'll uh, you know, plug a few books that we like. And yeah, they're like just that. helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So. Start with the <laughs> vulnerability, right? Start yeah, with so, the insecurities. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So let's just start there with the mm -hmm. whole concept of insecurities are injured feelings. Yeah. So well, yeah. what's your take on that? Well, I think it's, <clears throat> you can hear us being couples therapists when we talk about this, right? right? right. Because. When people are coming in to us and they're saying, can you believe this happened? They're not, it, it's not benign. It triggers something for them, right? Mm -hmm. um, the tone of someone's voice, the volume of someone's voice, the way they sent the message, the context in which they sent it, that's all important information. Right. But what it's telling us, and what I think is kind of maybe the most helpful way to, to look at that is what feelings, what vulnerabilities, what difficult things came up for you when those things happened, right? right. Um, and they, like, I think the word you used was injured feelings, right? Um, injured feelings, which may be tripping on some core vulnerabilities, things that maybe we feel um, not very good about, right? Uh, our deepest, darkest fears about right. ourselves. Yeah, so I started using the term injured feelings several years ago because in thinking about some of the things that we talk about with our clients about, you know, this idea of vulnerabilities, it's kind of a difficult I feel like it's a difficult concept to understand. Uh, we, we get it, but we got all these, you know, we were inundated with this right. in our training and stuff. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, but the, um, so I was thinking about what is it? Because one of the things I would talk to people a lot about is that a couple um, important elements of it when I'm helping them understand this concept is one, uh, they can't change them. Like once you have vulnerabilities, you're, you're going to always have them mm -hmm. to some degree, right? I mean, so, um, and our goal is to really take power away from them. <clears throat> but uh, the other piece is that they're not true. Mm -hmm. So so when we're talking about vulnerabilities, like, what's the first one you think of? Not good enough. Not good enough, right? right. I think of, like, unwanted, unloved. Maybe right. that speaks to... <laughs> <laughs> our vulnerabilities. That speaks to our vulnerabilities, <clears throat> right? Ooh, those those the first popped in our mind. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, you know, the the reality is, is that, you know, you're as good as you want to be. I'm, you know, as, I mean, being unwanted definitely is not reflective of my reality. Mm -hmm. So if you're having the, those feelings <clears throat> at your gut level, <clears throat> you know, it usually says more about what's going on about you than about how somebody else feels about sure. you. Sure, sure. So like feeling unwanted, for example... Um, you can be unwanted. Mm -hmm. You sure. know that as, you can be unwanted in a couple relationship. That is a possibility. Yes. But yeah. we're talking about that that kick in the gut feeling mm -hmm. that like I'm not I'm I'm not just unwanted here. I'm just not wanted. Right. 
period. Right. I'm just, people don't, I'm not welcome. I'm, I don't belong. <clears throat> I don't belong. You know? Yeah, it triggers that. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Same thing with like, they're not good enough feeling. And right. I'm not valuable enough to be here. I don't belong. Right. Yeah. So that's why I, I think of them as injured feelings. I think most of the world will often call these insecurities. Uh-huh. Yeah. You yeah. know, so like an intellectual insecurity mm-hmm. or, or I think on, was it friends where he's like, that's my thing, Ross. Oh, it's like, yeah. what's your thing? What's your thing? Uh-huh. And then Ross couldn't figure out his thing. Yeah. And then finally he did his thing mm-hmm. and it's like, there it is. He goes, yep, that's my thing. Yeah. Right there. Mm-hmm. And it's just something that we typically battle with. Uh, but the more we understand it, right. the more we can take power away from it. I think that yeah. that's the part that makes it an essential piece of being an effective, good communicator is to know. Um, sometimes I'll use the external language of like, well, there's my vulnerability mm-hmm. showing. There's my insecurity showing, right? We're in this ugly head. I'm, mm-hmm. oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not part of this. I'm, you know, not mm-hmm. valuable or important. There it is showing itself. Right. And what makes that important in communication is that you can see it. Right. And to see it already means you have some distance from it. So it automatically takes, like I think you said a minute ago, it takes some of the power away, right? right? Rather than I am mm-hmm. unwanted, unlovable, not good enough. Oh, there's that belief, that part, that fear that I'm not wanted. Right. And, and when when you do that, you're taking it, the conversation to a meta level, right? Yeah. So now you're... We love the word meta, right? right? Of course. Blow minds, well, right? Zuckerberg ruined it for all for all True, of us. You know? right. <laughs> Stole it and he made did. his company name. Yeah, so. yeah. No, but we yeah we do like you know uh, meta levels, meta uh, meta communication, yeah. communicating about communicating. communication. So even like in you know as silly of an example as it was in in Friends when when Ross says that's my thing, mm-hmm. like he's not, he's communicating on a meta level now. Yeah. Like he's he's they're they're having a really really small exchange about the exchange they just had yeah right yeah, yeah. and so <clears throat> so th- but th- I think that I, I think that for especially for couples I think that's uh, intimacy is found in meta levels on meta levels mm-hmm. so that's when we talk about going deeper yeah like yeah you know you can think of a meta level as going up or going down either way like right. you're you're going to a new level mm-hmm. with it which is where it is how intimacy, intimacy is found. right absolutely right. yeah Let's real quickly talk about something that I mean, we probably should start off with this. Uh, one of the kind of a misnomer about communication. Okay. Um, okay so <clears throat> we we titled this segment like uh, you know something to the effect of how to be an effective communicator or good at communication. Or being yeah. good at communication. But one thing we don't say, and we don't. I bet you you don't even say this in your personal life. Do you ever say like? Uh, um, uh, my husband and I don't communicate, Mm-mm. right? Because you're too much of a therapist, right? Right, right. right. Yeah. So you know what I'm getting at, yes, right? Yes, I do. I know exactly Go where ahead. you're going. Yeah. You can't not not communicate. Yeah. Right, right. One can, and that's one cannot not communicate. Can we put that quote up on the screen, Hannah? Um, Hannah's over here working though. Of course. Just, just because right. she has, I need to get a camera. She's on, a real person. On right? Hannah. Yeah. Um, she does a lot for us on that, but. Um. We, uh, Waslovic said that, um, who is somebody that therapists know, that we know, <laughs> that we know of, right. anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, they first quoted that, you know, a concept of one cannot not communicate. Mm-hmm. So then we can move into uh, Alison Krauss, oh, which yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of you know, uh, which I have, I have her, uh, we'll put her quote on screen too. Her, uh, the fame, like my favorite song that she sings is, uh, uh, you, you say it best when you say nothing at all. So mm-hmm. even when you're saying nothing, you're saying a lot. Right. So well, it's, it's the, another, we're name dropping here, right? Like real therapy nerds here, but it's the same research that John Gottman validated when right. he said that in connected personal relationships, like marital relationships mm-hmm. or whatever, that most of the communication is nonverbal. I think his numbers was something like 70% mm. right. of communication is nonverbal. Right. Yeah. So on that note, like uh, when a couple comes in and says, someone says, my partner just isn't communicating with me. Right. What what, do, what are they most mostly reflecting on? What they're actually communicating. <laughs> Which is? <laughs> I'm not happy. I'm right. not satisfied. This isn't working. Yeah. No. And, yeah. And uh, they're probably, their communication is at that point is very nonverbal. Right. Right. Absolutely. So, 
they're kind of experiencing a shutdown or you know uh, they're, they're not they're not speaking back but they are communicating a lot yeah. in that um, and and that's uh, and whatever that is if they're communicating it's it's frustrating yes Yes, and yeah. I think that, you know, if you just sit back and start observing this, right. sometimes I'll have my clients do that. It's a very, very powerful experience, right? Mm -hmm. The way someone shuts a cabinet door in the kitchen, the way that someone opens or closes the mm -hmm. door, right? I'm smiling because, did we carry that from grad school? The cabinet door? No, that was your cohort, I think. Was it? Mm -hmm. I mean, that is like the most common example I use for people. Really, like yeah. The cabinet door is being left open. Mm -hmm. and, the way um, you shut them. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the tone of shut. voice that oh, you God. use, right? Yeah, I'm sure I'm gonna tell a story about that because I don't think my wife would care. Because uh, there, there's this uh, to this day, like the, there's a point in time where she was, um, I was in my home office and I could hear the cabinet doors being kind of slammed, and I'm sitting there thinking that she's upset with me about mm -hmm. something, what I <laughs> and do. she's wanting me to know. Right, and so I confronted about her because I thought she's being passive aggressive, you know, trying to let me throw no communicate with me by slamming the cabinet doors. And to this day, she 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 would tell you that that had nothing to do whatever was going on for her had nothing to do with me. But that goes back to how injured feelings uh -huh. work, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so I'm sitting there thinking, like for some reason, this nonverbal communication has something to do with me why would I think that mm -hmm. you know right can't be uh, you're not see Carrie's over there thinking oh I, I can tell you why <laughs> I can tell you what the problem uh, is you want me to actually? answer that question mm -hmm. that's one other uh, episode yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so uh let's let's move on into talking about the importance of being curious about the truth absolutely you know? right and i i think this is a really hard thing to do i think this is quite a challenge extremely <clears throat> extremely yeah. because i think that being curious rather than leaping to our famous favorite word right in couples therapy making mm -hmm. assumptions right right yeah um it <clears throat> it requires the first thing i usually try to actually help people with and making space for this is just giving yourself a pause right right and from a kind of a brain perspective in a sense, you're giving your frontal lobe a chance to catch up because sure. curiosity comes from the, you know, the part of our brain that can be creative and it isn't obsessed with confirming an outcome, right? It isn't about survival, mm -hmm. right? Curiosity is in a sense, being able to not worry about your survival and your safety and to explore. Right. And so um, to, to take a pause in an exchange with your partner or you're having mm -hmm. injured feelings and to be curious instead of, you know, protect yourself from the assumptions that you've made. Mm -hmm. um, it's really hard to do because most people come into us and they'll say, so if I say this, I know my partner will say this. Mm -hmm. If I do this, I know my partner will do that. And you know what, they're, they're usually pretty right, right? Sure. They've got the script down. But what that also says is that they've all, they're all living in kind of a world of assumptions, right? And these automatic right. responses. And what can happen if we mm -hmm. slow down, take a beat, and be curious? Sure. Right? So, it's, so the conundrum there, too, is um, if they're, they know their patterns. So, right. Um, you know, you're right that you know, a lot of times their assumptions are not flawed mm -hmm. or, or I mean they're they're correct they're, they're more correct than not right most of the, a lot of the times so you know how you know how can we then justify being curious when they have an accurate assumption about how mm -hmm. this person will or won't respond and I think that that goes to kind of what kind of what you're reflecting on is um, what part of the brain is in charge Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and so when you're making assumptions or you're, you're defensive and um, your assumptions line up with defensiveness, yes, uh, I think that's the survivor brain. So yeah. that you, being curious in war is probably, it, yeah, not a good idea yeah. to go wandering it, around uh, unless you have a, a very strong defense structure in place, a system in place right. to to protect you uh, because you're going, I would think anyways, I, I never was in the military, but I would think that I probably need to assume danger first 
mm-hmm. before I assume something else, right? Right. right. Not danger. Safety and first, as we all say across sure. the country. Yeah. And um, and so the the reality is is that like uh, when we're grown, now I'm speaking separately aside from like uh, relationships uh, situations that are physically dangerous, you know. So I'm not talking about I'm talking about um, the relationships that we're in where we're not really worried about being in danger physically. Right. No abusive right. relationships. Sure. Right. So even though you, someone might be accurate on that, this, if I do this, then this person may likely is going to respond defensively mm-hmm. or, you know, from their survivor brain. Um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of, I think what's important is trying to take that pause that you're talking about. And remember that you're not at war. Right. I, I can be curious here. Mm-hmm. My feelings aren't going to hurt me. Their feelings right. aren't going to hurt me. They're not dangerous in the sense of they're putting me in physical danger. They, they might hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, but I'm a grown person that if the situation is such where I am feeling unsafe, even emotionally unsafe, mm-hmm. I don't have to stay in that situation. Right. I don't have to continue right. to be unsafe. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. I can, I can at, at minimum or at most, I guess I could walk away. Yeah. Right. You know, from that if I need to. Right. Um, now, just again, disclaimer, that's if you're in a situation where there is physical safety, obviously we would never sure. encourage Advocate. you to do that. Right. Right. <clears throat> right. Um, being physically safe would be priority one. But yes. aside from that, it's, it's reminding you that I, I, I do think the first step, as you said, is taking that pause mm-hmm. um, and then reminding yourself you're OK. Yeah, I'm OK. Right. Just because it doesn't feel yeah. good doesn't mean you're not OK. Right. Yeah. Which we can, I, I want to talk a little bit more about. We're kind of getting into the last Those, point. Yeah, you can see it moving uh, right yeah. into it. Yeah. But I want to mm-hmm. talk. I want to say something else about uh, being curious about the truth. Um, I call this finding the nugget of truth. Mm. So. A lot of times in couple relationships, it, well, it's just this way with any relationship, really, that it's easy to identify what, where you think the other person's wrong. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's Automatic, easy. It's easy right? for everybody, mm-hmm. right? And they might be. They might be like 95% wrong. Sure. You know, and, um, and you might be able to give a compelling argument on why they're 95% wrong. Yep. Right? But yep. then... If I'm the other person and I'm like, okay, I'm 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 buying in to I'm seeing where I have, uh, where I went wrong. Yeah. I'm not all wrong. Where right? I went wrong. I, I can't be. Uh, most people aren't all wrong, on something. So like, if, so if I'm 95% wrong, I'm 5% right. <laughs> right. <laughs> such I want to know. What, I want to know his laugh is. Such a therapist. Wrong. Can't just be right or wrong. <laughs> How annoying are we? Or does that make me uh, the stereotypical male? Basically. Well, know. absolutely. You can't divorce yourself of that, <laughs> right? right? But <laughs> that's my argument. Like that, I'm not all wrong, right, babe? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That'll go over real well, right? And it does yeah. in our sessions, right? <laughs> yeah. People love that. Well. Yeah. Um, sure. But it's like it's easy. Again, it, I think that's why arguments happen because. Sure. You're not, most people, when they're arguing about something, or at least from my experience in working with people, they, uh, um, they're, they're on point mm-hmm. to some degree. I mean, um, on both sides, like they, their frustrations are in the thing they're upset about is valid. Yeah. yeah. What's hard in those moments is identifying, really working hard to try to find what I call that nugget of truth. That's that little 5% of like, what, what are they on to? Like, mm-hmm. what? what are they experiencing that is needs to be validated yeah. yeah you know and instead of focusing on you know how they went about validating or how they went about communicating it or or what their you know the misinterpretations of my messages and things what what is going on from this person right now that um is is true for them and most of the time they're not crazy people, right. you know. Right. I know right. we don't like to use that word in here, but it's it's true. Like right. it, it, this part is not you're not we're not talking about dealing with people that are mentally insane, right? Here, or that can't grasp reality. Legally insane, right? Mentally unstable, right? Right. There, say that again. They can't grasp reality. They can't grasp reality. Right. right. So finding that nugget of truth is 
is a lot more challenging but it requires to to be curious when your survivor brain is lighting up yeah wanting to get defensive protect you right mm -hmm. i mean if when you when your survivor brain is is interpreting a message of that's saying like i feel like that you're saying i'm a piece of crap right right and then you, the therapists are saying you you need to get curious about that like that's just not Insult. natural yeah right? that sounds almost sometimes like insult to injury right. yeah. like mm -hmm. um what do you mean i need to do something? help me understand yes um okay. you know two two phrases that i stole from um, hal rumple who wrote screen free parenting and screen free marriage which is about creating a pause is uh help me understand and tell me more you know yeah. but mm -hmm. And so I, you know, so I kind of get this deer in the headlight looks from my clients. They're like, so when it feels like they're saying I'm a piece of crap, you're wanting me to say, tell, tell me, me more. more. <laughs> and I'm like, yep. Then I, you know, yeah. I guess. Then then I have imposter syndrome, which Josie and Mary talk talked about. about yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound right. Mm -hmm. No, but it is. Yeah. You know, I think we do need to get curious about. Um, tell me more because I think what you end up finding out is they're probably not saying that right right what you think they're saying is not what's being said sure and there's always more there is always and there more. is always more there is always more which kind of does nicely flow into our last point right right and this one again they're all this is all challenging being a good communicator yeah. is is hard um, we've we've studied this we work with this mm -hmm. and we're always struggling with it too sure. right as uh, professionals and as you know real people mm -hmm. so there's no expectation here that you like learn how to do this and then you achieve good communication status and you never have problems right. anymore right sure. but every single one of these points is I think a really really lucrative uh, task to take on right. right and so the last point of today is um, <clears throat> to talk about how to create safety within right and if you can, you know, really invest in that, the payoff is huge. Right. So, um, we, and we were talking about this just a little bit before we went live, um, that most of what we, we hear in like couple relationship, relationships, which is true, is creating, you know, a, a relation, an environment of emotional safety yes. within that relationship, Between, right? Uh, yeah, within, uh-huh. So, uh, and so what that often looks like in sessions are, you know, or will be like a couple, one, one or both saying that I don't feel safe right. with this person and then say, so, um, Mr. Therapist, help my partner make the changes they need right, to make right. so I can feel safe. Right. Do better. Relationally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's not, that's not, um, uh, completely un, uh, unfounded or it's not off I mean there is right. that does have to happen but that's right. not where I think it begins right right I think it begins mm -hmm. with self right because remember we're not we're not talking about relationships where there is a risk or a high risk of uh, being physically unsafe we're right. talking about um, mm -hmm. just not feeling safe enough to talk about your feelings because you're afraid they're gonna get thrown back at you mm -hmm. or that certain aspects of your words or your actions are going to get weaponized against right. you, you know, right. things like that. Yeah. But it's remember that that feeling of unsafety is all happening within the self, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And so, yeah. so it's I, I think where people have to begin is really learning how to to be really good about what they need to do to create uh, to to be safe in any context yeah. um, emotional context right <clears throat> it's not easy it's, it's difficult yeah but it's learning how to experience something that is difficult and then respond to it mm -hmm. in a way that where you're m keeping the integrity of your safe place I guess, sure. In a way. sure I think that the way to do this is a important word and it's about attunement right so yeah. being in tune and aware of what's going on for you what are you yeah. what are you thinking um what are you feeling emotionally what's your body what, what messages are you getting from mm -hmm. your body right and all of that is sending you know important information that if if you can pause if mm -hmm. you can develop this 
I think it's a somewhat of a skill, right, mm-hmm. to take in this information. And you can ask yourself, so what's going on for me and what do I need to do? One of my favorite right. mantras for myself and that I pass on to my clients is to kind of connect to the belief, the mantra, the settling, you know, center of that I know how to take care of myself. Mm-hmm. I know what I need to do when I need to do it. I think those are really, really, really helpful um, perspectives and mm-hmm. I think being in tune means that you can create safety within yourself so mm-hmm. if you know that this is hard for you what do you need to do for yourself and how right. do you advocate and how do you make that known and how do you also keep maybe some when do you make it known and, and how do you keep some of it for yourself right um, this is the responsibility though of the person right not the coupleship mm-hmm. exactly right exactly yeah and um, and then from there you can move uh, you start learning uh, if the other, if your partner's doing that too, sure, you're basically right. creating a dance together where you, your efforts toward creating safety start. You try to start figuring out a rhythm with mm-hmm. it, basically, mm-hmm. and that's how, in my opinion, how emotional safety is created in in between the couple. Right, right. You know, um, it does remind me though. I don't know if you remember that clip. It's one of my favorite clips on the internet from uh, Van Jones when he's speaking to. A group of college students and he, he's mainly talking about you know it's kind of the rise of this idea of safe spaces and mm-hmm. trigger warnings and, and things like that and so so everything that he's saying to this I don't think it would it work um, perfectly with the the level of intimacy that's involved in, in vulnerability that's supposed to be involved in a couple relationship but you know it's, it's that clip where he he said like you know I'm not going to pave the jungle for you you know we are not going to pave the jungle for you you know put on some boots you know so mm-hmm. he's talking to, he's talking about venture you know get curious is what he's saying yeah venture out into the dangers of and he's speaking emotionally here you know into mm-hmm. the or, or even intellectually you know um, into uh, concepts and ideals and things that are, are difficult and challenging and some of them are good and some of them aren't good you know get out there mm-hmm. and experience them and he said like I want he said I want you to be offended he's talking to college students I want you to be offended every day on this campus and then mm-hmm. learn how to speak back yeah you know it's yeah. he's talking about this is really important for growth mm-hmm. and I think where yeah. that does apply to relationships is like um, uh, is like arguments mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if a couple came into you and said, like, we never argue. Yeah. yeah. What are you thinking? They don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't been together that they're, long. Yeah, they're either new or they're shut down. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're, they are, uh, they, I, I think that either they're lying, mm-hmm. you know, or they're, you know, very uh, emotionally distant and, and not connected. Or they just haven't been together long enough, you know, to start having these arguments, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But the the thing about arguments is that I don't think people are very good about knowing how to, you know, uh, discern the difference yeah. between a healthy argument and a right. not and a, one that's not. Right. But I think and that so, that's why knowing how to take care of yourself right. means you're, you'll be able to maybe even discern the difference. And when you get out into that jungle and it is unsafe. You know what you need to do to right. get there. And it's making me think of something else. We're quoting therapists today, I guess. But, um, or, uh, uh, or political analysts. Or political <laughs> analysts, right. He, like yeah, he's not, he's not a marriage family therapist. But um, yeah. Alexandra Catahawka said something one time that's always, she said she tells her clients a lot of, please state the obvious. Hmm. Right? And I think yeah. that's a great way of saying Oof, state the obvious, man. right? That makes me feel... right. Uh, uh-huh. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't sometimes. know if I want to do. Yeah, so if that's right. something like I can't have this discussion right now. This right. isn't going to work for me at this moment. I don't know mm-hmm. what to say to that. Those statements we often I think don't say them because they seem so obvious. And especially mm-hmm. in couples who've been together for a long time, they'll say things mm-hmm. like, "You should already know this. You know that about me. Why right. do I have yes. to say that?" And yeah. let's go ahead and let's work through that. Maybe if you can learn about how to take care of yourself and go ahead and state the obvious, right? That maybe actually is going to help everybody to actually know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, yeah, I completely agree. Mm-hmm. So we could keep going well, on I was going to say, on. and now part two yeah. becomes... No, <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned for the next three <laughs> hours of, of this episode. <laughs> of us <laughs> just musing around right. uh, the world of communication. Uh, um, let's just uh, let's go, ahead, go ahead and end yeah. on... Um,
just giving a few book recommendations. Yeah. And if anything else comes to mind while we're talking, okay. feel free to mention it. Yeah. Um, but we, we have two that are almost embarrassed to put them up because they're so commonly used, yeah. but they really are good books. But, but today is about good communication, so it is basic. And remember how sure. important the basics are. Right. Basics of food, basics Absolutely. of sleep, basics of good communication. Right, exactly. Yeah. So the Will Smith no, I'm Oh, yeah, don't you do it. Don't you do it. Uh, yeah, it's going to quit. Yeah. yeah. They tease me for liking the Will Smith book too much. A lot. Um, uh, the first one is uh, the John Gottman, yep. the seven, you, you mentioned John Gottman earlier, Seven Principles for Making a Marriage Work. Yeah. I mean, that's, this book is like 20 years old or more. And it is just as helpful today sure. as it was then. Sure, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So that's a, that's a good one. And we have, should have an image of that, but I'll make sure to put links uh, to all these books and even to like some of the clips we mentioned and things like that. I'll okay. try to link Great that idea. as well. Um uh, the, uh, the other one too, which is also a very old book, uh, but still holds up, is the Five Love Languages. Yeah, it gives people a lot of stuff to talk about. I think it helps people kind of do right. the things we talked about today, right? How would you? What would your summary of the Five Love Languages be? If you were to tell, if you were gonna, if you were trying to sell it to someone, you'd say this book is. It helps you identify more maybe of what you need and how often we love people by giving them what we need not paying attention to what they need right because i haven't met a whole lot of people that are in committed relationships with people that have the same mm -hmm. amount or degree or type of love language right, right. exactly mm -hmm. uh one that isn't uh people might not be as familiar with is a book that i am super crazy about right now called the untethered soul and this gets into more of what Carrie was talking about earlier about really being still, uh, creating that pause and being learning to be present within the self. And really, it, it's a book that it's kind of existential, um, which I, I like books like that. But if um, if you can kind of get past that, if you, if you have trouble with books like that and get past that, just mm -hmm. kind of think about it in a sense of this is really... An exploration of self, mm -hmm. you know, and and I, th I think Michael Singer, who wrote the book, does a good job of helping you take a deep dive into these complexities mm -hmm. and how we typically operate, which is true for most people. Like it's just different; it's the same, in but, the, but it's, it just manifests differently. But it's all the basics are there for most people. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's a that's a really good book to uh, I think to help kind of tend to the the well, really, we tend to all these points, but the yeah, lot, yeah. you know, we, we started, we ended with the thing that where it should begin, yeah. which is, is creating safety within self. Yeah. And that's really where it all begins. Yeah. And, and it kind of serves as an umbrella focus for, or an umbrella um, goal for the other things, too. Yeah. So. For good communication, really. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we have to just end, right? We're yeah, I guess we just have to, you know, there's never, no goodbyes, just see you later. Just see you later. <laughs> <laughs> there will always be more yes, to talk about. So, always. So we appreciate uh, you watching and the support that you have for these shows and our channel. Please make sure you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and uh, ring the bell so you can be notified when more videos are posted. But also head on over to Facebook if you're if you haven't been there and uh, like our page there and uh, and you can follow us with you know different posts that we have there too. So appreciate you. Thank you.